All right, friends, lesson seven. Lesson seven deals with the lengths of curvy things. It's a topic we call arc length, the lengths of curvy things. So I want to do the length of a curvy thing from some x value a to some x value b. This is a function of x, and I want to know how long that curve is. How long is that curve? The problem is the only thing I know how to do is to draw a line segment. That's the only thing I know how to do. And so I could say that the arc length is approximately equal to Pythagorean theorem delta x squared plus delta y squared. Uh, and that would be oh, delta x squared plus delta y squared. And that would be the approximate arc length. And the only problem with that is that it very obviously does not work. And so I think, well, maybe one line segment isn't enough. Maybe I need more line segments. So maybe if we pick some demarcation points and we said, okay, maybe four line segments does the job. Then my arc length is approximately equal to a sum as k goes from 1 to 4 of the square root of delta x sub k squared plus delta y sub k squared. And so we just run Pythagorean theorem four times, add them up. That's got to do a better job. And the answer is that does do a better job, uh, generally speaking, that does do a better job, except that it doesn't do the job we want. And so instead we say, let's pick n demarcation points and connect all of those dots all the way around so that there are n little line segments and we say arc length is approximately equal to the sum as k goes from 1 to n of the square root of delta x sub k squared plus delta y sub k squared and I know that by now video viewer you are in a panic because here's how this goes always. We're going to make the things we're using to approximate smaller and smaller, thinner and thinner. We're going to get infinitely many of them, and that's going to turn into an integral. And when we turn this thing into an integral, there is always a delta x sitting right there. But there isn't. And so you don't have anything that turns into a dx when we find an integral. Lucky for us, hey, hey, everybody, look away from your screen. There it is. M Mr. Ritter, um, I don't, I don't mean to sound sound like I know what I'm talking about, but you can't do that. Oh, well. Okay. Okay. If that's the way you want to be about it. That's fine. I still say we need it there. But Mr. Ritter, it breaks 12 rules of math to just throw a delta x in the problem. Yeah, I know. That's why we're going to divide by delta x. But we're not just going to divide by delta x. We're going to divide by the square root of delta x squared. Because I want to put it under the radical. I want to multiply and divide by delta x in a creative way so that I have something that will turn into an integral as delta x gets smaller and smaller, as the number of segments gets larger and larger. If I do that, then the sigma turns into an integral symbol from a to b. The square root is still a square root. Delta x squared over delta x squared is 1. 
delta y over delta x becomes dy dx and delta x becomes dx. This is the formula for what we call arc length. Integral radical 1 plus derivative squared dx. That's something you've got to have. You've got to know it. it you've got to be able to spit that back at me whenever I ask. Because I'm about to ask. Oh. Let's find the length of y equals sine x on 0 to pi. This arc. How do we do that? We do it without thinking. We know what arc length is. It is an integral from A to B of square root of 1 plus derivative squared dx. Go ahead, give me the derivative of sine x. Go ahead, shout it right at your computer screen. There we go. Well, what do we do from there? Well, we bring in everybody's handy-dandy calculator. And we say integrate square root of 1 plus cosine x squared, where x is the variable, from 0 to pi, bam! And we have to do, oh, really? And we have to do that because I don't know how to integrate that by hand. And neither do you. Three decimal places, truncated or rounded, because this is AP calculus. That's what arc length is going to look like, friends. You just randomly, integral, square root, 1 plus derivative squared, we just bang it out. Uh, there's only one kind of problem that we worry about. Uh, find the length of y equals cube root of x on, oh, let's say negative, oh, let's, oh, let's go negative 27 to 27. Here we go. Figure not drawn to scale. Except that it probably is. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? Arc length is the integral from negative 27 to 27 of the square root of 1 plus... Oh. Oh. What is that derivative? That's 1 third x to the negative 2 thirds. That derivative does not exist for all values of x in our interval. This is not defined at x equals 0. And so I cannot use this arc length integral to find an arc length over any interval that includes 0. And so I think to myself, is there another way? And the answer is yes. We could do a dy integral. We could go from negative 3 to 3. Negative 3 to 3. But if we do that, we would have to say 1 plus dx dy squared. 
And the, the proof is analogous to the original proof we did. You just throw a delta y in and divide by radical delta y squared as opposed to what we did with delta x's. Well, how the heck are we supposed to do that? Well, how do we do that? We need to solve for x in terms of y. So if y is the cube root of x, then x is y cubed. And so the derivative of x with respect to y is 3y squared. And then we just ask our calculator what that is. We say, I need the integral of the square root of 1 plus 9x to the fourth. Your calculator doesn't care with respect to x from negative 3 to 3. And your calculator gives that to you, just like so. Boom. 3 decimal places, truncated or rounded. Excellent. Please permit me to go two more, one more. I'll go one more. Let capital F of X be the integral from one to X of radical T to the fourth minus one DT. Find the arc length of capital F on Oh, 1 to 6 no calculator no that's not possible how can we do math without a calculator oh I think you're actually pretty halfway decent at this thing because you know that arc length is going to be the integral from 1 to 6 of radical 1 plus derivative squared dx so all I need is the derivative of this with respect to x. How do I take the derivative of an integral from a numbery thing to a lettery thing? Well, that's the integrand with upper limit subbed in. Radical x to the fourth minus 1. So what happens inside that radical? I've got radical x to the fourth minus 1 squared. So this is x to the fourth minus 1 plus 1 square root. So this is the integral from 1 to 6 of x squared dx which is one-third x cubed from 1 to 6. That's 216 thirds minus one-third is 215 thirds. Uh, truth be told, without the machine in your hand, arc length is almost impossible to do. You have to contrive the example so carefully to make sure that the problem can be done. But it is not trivial uh, for me, with or without a machine, to ask you to set up an arc length integral. And if you set it up, then the machine just solves the problem for you. So, so that's what we're thinking about arc length, you've got to know how to crank out an arc length integral, and you can. So there's your 15 minutes of madness. We'll catch up about this in the morning. Thanks, everybody.